Is there anyone out there who still isn't clear about what doing drugs does? Okay, last time. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Get me the chicken laundry.
Mr. Williams has been there for many a time. He wears a bag of paper to carry a very big thing. He keeps both hands busy opening the door, taking out the hand of the egg, and marking the chart. Mr. Williams has been there for
some into particles. The small end goes down, the large end up. Dozens of fresh eggs, cartons closed, sealed with a government label of quality and size. All eggs go into fiber cases holding 30 dozen eggs. This man seals the cases of eggs and they are ready for shipment. This 
Yes, I can, said Chirp. I can walk, even if I can't walk. Aha, said Quack. But we are on an island. Now, I can go and see the big wide world, because I can swim. Wait, Quack. We all want to see the big wide world. And I have an idea. You can swim. So you could carry Chirp when you're across the water. And soon Chirp will be able to fly. You'll be able to tell us what it's like way up in the sky. And maybe someday I'll be able to do something too. And this seemed such a good idea that Pete and Quack and Chirp all went off together to see the big wide world. is you. It's also me. In fact, it's us. It's all of us. The story I want to tell you is about the egg and us. What kind of an egg it is and why it's important to us. This is a very special kind of egg. It's a nest egg. And a nest egg is a great thing to have around. You put it away and when you need it, there it is. 
It has a way of hatching out into wonder, like a trip abroad, or a new home, or a college education for the industry. And there's a very special thing about this nest egg. It's made up of the United States savings bond. More than 40 million Americans own nest eggs like this. 40 million Americans have chosen to put their money into the U.S. savings bonds because they have faith in them, because they believe in the nation's future. Busy and prosperous, with a growing economy based solidly on a sound dollar and on competitive enterprise, free to make the most of the country's immense natural resources. Out of the mountains and streams, the hills and plains and the forests of our continent, we are producing power and raw materials in such abundance as the world has never seen. With these, we have built an industrial establishment of tremendous and constantly increasing productivity. We are turning out the biggest volume ever of goods and services. We are continually adding to our productive capacity too. More factories and more machinery. Today, earning bigger take-home pay than ever before in our history. Family incomes have never been higher. People are confident that this prosperity is healthy and is going to continue. They know that our economy has made its greatest gains in these last few years since inflation was checked. And they have faith in the future, theirs and the nation's. They show it in many ways. For example, look at home building. Last year alone, over one and a quarter million new housing units were built in this country. People are having more children, bigger families. More youngsters born in recent years have been second, third, or fourth born children, especially among middle and upper income levels, a reversal of an historic trend. Finally, and most importantly, people are saving more. The nation's nest egg is growing. Today, people have over $235 billion put away in bank deposits, in securities, and in currency. Savings are increasing because Americans know that the dollar is sound. They are confident that they will be able to buy just as much with it tomorrow as they can buy today. And these savings, piling up because people believe in our country's future, have the effect of making that future all the more secure. Here is a vast reservoir of purchasing power. Because of it, people can afford to buy goods as they need them. They can plan ahead for homes, for cars, for many things. This in turn means that industry can plan ahead, knowing that there will be a continuing market for what it produces. Out of these savings, furthermore, comes the financing necessary to enable established industries to expand, or new ones to open for business. As long as people put their surplus money into savings, or invest it so that it is producing more goods and services. It helps keep the wheels of industry turning and helps stabilize the economy. It is when there is too much spending money, competing for too few goods, that the price of everything goes up and the value of the dollar goes down. That is why savings are of such vital importance to the nation. And one kind in particular, United States savings bonds. Savings bonds are one of America's most important institutions. They are not new. During the war, people like you and me bought and held some $30 billion worth of e-bonds. These helped to pay for the planes and ships and munitions that were the price of victory. They did a tremendous amount to absorb surplus money. At a time when consumer goods were scarce, money was plentiful and inflation was a constant danger. Then came the end of the war. The experts had figured out that with the end of the war, most of us would stop buying bonds and cash in those we had. Instead, people held on to most of those they owned and went right ahead buying more. They had caught on to the nest egg idea, and they liked it. 
All this meant that of the $275 billion of national debt, incurred largely as the cost of winning the war, a healthy percentage could be placed with individuals on a long-term basis. Less needed to be concentrated in commercial banks. The effect was to promote economic stability. Today, this is even more important because we must maintain great military strength. Currently, we are spending for national defense about two-thirds of the government's operating budget, and this is a tremendous figure. We are constantly trying to buy more security for less money and to improve our outlook for peace through diplomacy. Nevertheless, our military expenditures will continue high. When this results in a deficit, it adds to the size of our national debt. When there is a surplus, the national debt can be reduced. Meantime, this national debt must be managed. And managing the national debt is big business. Interest payments on it alone amount to $200 a second, $12,000 a minute. It is vital that a debt of this proportion be managed soundly so as not to upset the country's economy. Who owns the national debt has a lot to do with our economic stability. The government naturally must get a great deal of what it needs from the nation's commercial banks. But for the dollars it borrows from the banks, it must exchange its own securities. On these, the banks can then make loans and extend credit. Under certain circumstances, even up to five or six times the value of the security. For all practical purposes, the effect of this credit extension is to increase the country's supply of money. And when the supply of money begins to outstrip our productive capacity, look out for trouble. So whenever it can, the government borrows from other sources that are not inflationary. By far the most important of these are you, me, and about 165 million others like us. Individual citizens who are willing to lend some of their surplus money on a long-term basis at excellent return. Out of a total national debt of $275 billion, some $65 billion is owned by you and me and people like us. And every penny of this is anti-inflationary, helping to maintain the sound dollar. The sound dollar, which is the basic essential of a healthy economy. A lot of other investors outside the banks, corporations, insurance companies, foundations, and so forth, hold $70 billion more. Much of it on a long-term non-inflationary basis, too. Another $50 billion is held in the government's own investment accounts, such as Social Security. That leaves some 65 billions that the banks own, plus an additional 25 billions held by the Federal Reserve System. It is important for this proportion of bank ownership to be kept in line for the dollar to remain in The best way to do this is to sell all real savings bonds to more people. That's why the United States Savings Bond Program means so much to every man, woman, and child among us. Standards and our future security depend on a larger degree than most of us realize. But those trained in economic matters realize it. And that's why so many of the nation's business, labor, and agricultural leaders, including bankers themselves, are solidly behind the U.S. savings bond program. Thousands of banks across the country are working actively to promote the government's bond program. They sell millions of savings bonds. In addition, 40,000 companies, large and small, have adopted the payroll savings plan for their employees. The roster of these companies is an honor roll of the best in American business and industry. Through this plan, millions of working men and women buying bonds regularly are piling up nest eggs, ensuring their own security and peace of mind for tomorrow. One among the 40,000 companies is the Burroughs Corporation. Its president, John S. Coleman, is one of the sincerest believers in the benefits of the savings bond program. I am convinced that the United States Savings Bond Program is one of the most important forces in our economy making for a sound dollar. This sound dollar is the economic bedrock our enterprise stands on. Anything that helps keep it secure is greatly to our advantage. 
Is there anyone out there who still 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 still
I am, in my opinion, well respected by my colleagues, and I publish several important papers, as well as three books. My contribution as a scientist is a matter of record, but this will not help the case, I please. For already some of my colleagues are hinting that I'm acting strangely. Stanyek is having hallucinations, but this affects only me. And there is something else involved. There is involved the welfare of this country, perhaps the world. If something happens to me, this will be the only record of the strange events that started that evening in Cave's shop in the West End. Show you, sir? Yes. The crystal egg in the window. I should like to buy it. The crystal egg, yes, sir. An interesting piece, sir. Sir, here we are, sir. <laughs> it's a good looking piece, what? Fine. If you will uh, wrap it, please. Yes. Uh, excuse me, just a minute, sir. Doesn't seem to be marked. Well, why aren't you looking the book? Bought the bargain. Got me worth more than ten bob. He only paid two quid for the lot. No, not listed. Are you wrapping it? Things in a powerful hurry, that one. And the customer seems anxious to buy. I haven't much time. 
Uh, we haven't discussed the price. That, that'll be five pounds. Five pounds? For a piece of crystal? Oh, but Sam, this I'll uh, give you a pound. A pound? Oh, dear me. Oh, oh you, you shot my wife. Oh, a pound, indeed. Now, it's a, the price is five pounds and a steal at that size. Two pounds ten, that's all I have. And it was seven. But I was told. Well, 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 I wish I had a number. The brother of the sandwich is coming in and being in the people. Oh, that's all. The name is me. I said I'd be back. Back, back. You'll recognize me. So close, so terribly close to telling him I was too busy. I'd purchase certain items from the shop, paid well for them, so I owe no favors. Perhaps I too wondered why anybody would pay five pounds for a piece of crystal. So I said I'd see him. That man comes over, we'll never get to the flick. Do you really have your heart set on it? Well, it's not that important, but perhaps we could tomorrow night. That I'm stepping up it. <laughs> Do I disturb you? I mean, can you get your work with me done, with me hanging around here at all? Mm, I'd say you were uh, a slight disturbance. I could go. Oh, no, no, stay. You know what I wonder? What? I wonder how an educated man like you finds a girl like me interesting. Nonsense, we compliment each other. Oh? Go together, like, uh, tea and crumpets, uh, like Georgette, the professor. Oh. <laughs> but I would like to see my visitor alone. Oh, of course. Oh, now, Georgette, I'm not sending you away, darling. You know how much you mean to me. But in this case, well, this man lives in the neighborhood and he's a talkative little buzzard. And people do like to talk about old bachelor professors. Run along now, darling, and go out the back way. All right. But don't forget the cinema tomorrow night. Hello. Good night, Jack. Good night, dear. Come in. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Very good of you to see me, sir. How long? Oh, my. Oh, this is nice. Oh, here's a piece of mine, one item of mine. How ah, well it looks in the room. Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry I can't ask you to sit down, but I'm pressed for time. Examination papers. Yes, yes, of course, I understand. Well, this won't take more than a moment of your time, Professor. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to ask you, sir, what, what is this? Huh? It's crystal. Very ordinary crystal. Ordinary crystal. Mm -hmm. Are you sure, sir? Uh, 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 is there no way of testing it? Well, if you want to leave it here and I get time, I'll examine it. Uh, under your glass, in the yes. spectroscopes, oh, that would be fine. That would show it up, wouldn't it, sir? Yes. Could you do it now? Oh, no, I can't. Uh, no, no, of course not. Well, in that case, sir, I'll leave it here and I won't take up any more of your time, Professor, if you'll do it. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Good night.
left all night. I couldn't stop in all my years of research. I'd never seen anything like this. Nor did any of my books and charts help. But only one thing was I certain. This landscape is not of this earth. Time to take a look at your crystal. Oh, but sir, there are customers coming this morning. Uh, well, uh, uh, stall them off. Maybe I'll get a chance to look at it this morning. Uh, call me later. The crystal became my life. I didn't even go to my classes. I worked feverishly, and I began to make progress. Slowly but certainly. The strange landscape in the crystal became clearer and clearer. I was able to distinguish certain features of the terrain. Landmarks became visible. The spectroscope readings indicated that the atmosphere of this landscape was different from ours. The mineral content of the mountain ranges were of no earthly origin. There was only one possible conclusion. I was looking at another planet.
I'll see my friend Walker. If you publish my story, well, then they'll have to believe it. They'll have to believe it.